Um, I think I wanted to make a movie. Um, and I didn't realize it um, since I was a teenager. And I remember um, me and my brothers would come in to, um, after being out all night, we'd come in and my mother, who uh, claims uh, that she never slept, um, would be sitting in front of the TV at two or three in the morning. She would have been crying from uh, watching um, what she thought was a, a sad um, old movie. And um, I remember her talking about this, this, this movie and it was, uh, she said it, it was about some, some sort of abandoned, um, either, a, either a, a ship or a space station or some, some workers were in some fashion abandoned out in the middle of nowhere and they were facing some kind of uh, certain demise, some sort of certain death. Um, and then somehow, once they accepted that they were uh, going to die, um, some magical being showed up, and I, she couldn't remember what it was, whether it was God or some some uh, some being from super being from outer space or something like that. And I remember me and my brothers hearing this story, and being utterly um, fascinated by this movie, and thinking someday um, we would see this movie. But you have to remember, my mother. Um, when she told these these um, the story of this movie, she was it was really sad. Even though it seemed to us a, a, a great, bizarre, uh, dramatic story, it she was she was was moved by it. As the years went by, as um, as as video uh, video stores opened, and you're able to find more and more of these movies and just watch them at your house, um, I think we realized um, little by little that this movie never really existed. Um, that, that my mother um, obviously was watching uh, TV late at night. She must have fallen asleep and saw the beginning of one movie um, and then fell asleep, saw the middle of yet maybe another movie and then fell asleep again and, yet, and maybe saw the ending of yet um, some other movie. Or maybe, I, and I've done this, we probably have all done this to a certain extent, where you see a movie and you fall asleep and you dream and the, your dream and the movie sort of become connected and you could you know no you can't determine in your mind which you really saw and which part of it you just imagined I when I realized that this movie didn't exist I think that was the exact time I thought well I'll make that movie well you know when um, when, when I think about it, that it took seven years for us to make it, you have to remember we began making this in 2001, at the very beginning of 2001, even before we had recorded um, any of um, Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. And I, we really thought that after the soft bulletin that Christmas on Mars would be our next sort of thing that we presented to the world. When people say that this movie took seven years, uh, you know, when I think of like a, a Tibetan monk, you know, waking up at, at dawn every day and meticulously placing a piece of sand in some, some uh, 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 puzzle that, you know, that, that covers a mountainside. We weren't working on it like that. I mean, we would work on it, um, we would shoot a couple of scenes, and then uh, months would go by um, before we could get back and, and do any more on it. Um, and, and it wasn't as though we had one uh, stream of idea that went through all this. We'd come back and I would have changed my mind about the, what I thought the movie um, could be or should be. And um, I think because it took so long, the movie um, became so, so much uh, richer and, and, and weirder and, and um, uh, better in, in any every way. I mean, technology, um, oh wow, that's the tornado warnings. Wicked. Can we keep it going? Well, let's go see what the story is. I can understand where there could be um, some comparisons to the, uh, you know, that the, the flaming lips have, maybe that we just made up the scenario that we were actually making Christmas on Mars as some grand hoax or that it was 
the, the vision of Christmas on Mars was perhaps even more than, than someone as ambitious and determined as me <laughs> could make. Um, and then I, I think it's even been compared to Guns N' Roses, um, what is it, Chinese Democracy al album that, um, that um, has it even come out? <laughs> so, um, but I, I never, I, you know, I never, I never doubted um, that we would, that we'd finish it, that we'd make it. I mean, so many people have given us their, really, I think, the best of their imaginations, the best of their energy, the best of their skills and time to do this. Um, that, of course, of course, I, I, I always knew that I would I'd, I'd finish it or, or die trying or die in the process or something, you know. I think a lot of people might might wonder: Are the Flaming Lips? Um, do we play in it? And of course, we don't. I don't think you you don't see us play our instruments and sing songs and stuff in it. Um, but we sort of, uh, I guess, we become sort of these mythological, um, um, sort of absurdist, surrealist sort of characters, which I, I think is is ultimately um, um, even even more fun than j uh, just another uh, way of seeing us up there on stage or something. Um, but I think, for the most part, I think I, I made it in the spirit of what what really um, people meant when they when they said punk rock in a sense punk rock meant you could just do whatever um, you wanted to do and 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 and, and I, I never I didn't make it thinking that I'm, I'm gonna be a, a great um, movie director I just made it because I was like well we do we're just we just do whatever we want and so we thought well let's make a we'll make a movie and 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 no one um, nobody stopped us So I, you know, I warn people, um, everybody who who watches it in the at the intense level that we're presenting Christmas on Mars, um, that it is, it's 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 extremely loud and it's extremely um, uh, jarring sometimes. Um, but I think that like a lot of things, I think when it's when it's intense, it um, it sort of becomes a different. Uh, experience. You, be careful. Maybe if it becomes too loud, just put your hands over your ears, or, or just, um, um, just I, I don't know. Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001: Space Odyssey, um, the Wizard of Oz. I remember watching that when I was um, uh, probably five or six different times when I was a child, seeing that. Um, uh, David Lynch's Eraserhead. Um, uh, Holy Mountain. Um, I think any anybody could cite those references and make drastically different, um, freaked out sort of movies. But certainly all those um, um, people who know those those directors and know those movies would be able to see elements of probably all those um, playing out to some extent throughout this. I don't think any we I don't think we were aware of really any of that while we were making it. It is such a such a panic and such a such a, a strange experience um, even making anything um, make any sense at all I think I think you'd it's giving us way too much um, credit to think that we could actually uh, take uh, an influence like a, a, a David Lynch or a Stanley Kubrick and uh, do anything with it um, well how would we we wouldn't even know what to do but I, I do know um, that that there is a, an utter um, freedom in um, just simply following your um, your obsessions, and um, certainly as the, as the years went by and, and we got deeper and deeper into Christmas on Mars, I knew that I I, I was I was doing that, and I, I, I somewhere along the way I thought even even if nobody else um, ever understands uh, this movie, that it would been um, it would have been my way of. Uh, of, of staying sane. A lot of people think that I went insane while I made this movie, but I know I would have gone insane if I, if I hadn't made it. So it, it's a testament as to, as to um, the fine line between um, what a person thinks of himself. I, I'm not sure I like that. I, I don't know if, if, if any artist would ever want to set um, Forever, um, in 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 the audience's mind, um, what their 
art really means. I don't think art has, has a, in a sense, really means anything. It, it's whatever, what you make it mean is exactly what it means. When an artist comes up to you and, and you think a, a song or a movie or a painting is about your subjective experience, and, and if the artist was to come up to you and say, oh, you know, you're, you're full of shit, that's not what I meant at all. Um, he's taken away um, the most powerful aspect of all art is what you make of it, and so I hope that I've 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 pleased uh, myself and my own um, inner inner happiness is is, is obviously all, all over this thing. But I, I hope, in a sense, that I've left it um, open to a, a billion uh, different um, interpretations of what. Um, what, what this movie could be, and I hope when, whenever uh, people experience Christmas on Mars, um, that afterwards uh, they can talk about it and see what the, your, your friends and your, 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 you know, the people that you're watching this with, um, see what they think of it, because I think that's the best thing about all, all um, intense um, experiences, um, especially with, with um, art, is everybody has a, their own take on it, which is, which is ultimately um, uh, more interesting and more entertaining and uh, more true, especially more true uh, to you. Last of all, I would always say um, thank you to um, all the Flaming Lips fans um, that we've ever had around the world and all the Flaming Lips fans that we will have um, in the future um, for uh, encouraging us and uh, for always um, believing in us and giving us this wonderful life and this wonderful um, opportunity and um, uh, providing us with the, with the greatest um, enthusiasm and, and instilling in us uh, hopefully an endless optimism um, and making us believe the things that we say in our songs uh, all the time and making them true and that is that um, hopefully people remember that um, anything is possible.